Hello my soccer universe. The international break is upon us and while many are bemoaned it, some will be happy that there's a little bit of break. I always look forward to see national teams play and in my case this means now the focus goes to the Nations League and say what you want about the tournament. I personally really enjoy it. I think this was one of the best ideas that um, UEFA came up with and I think it actually points towards the future away from the tournaments that are organized from one country to just a general, this is the European Championship. Listen to me. It will, I think it's going to happen one way or another this way. And I thought, yeah, since we have it, uh, this uh, international break can come up, it might be a good um, thing to look at where things are, what games we do we have to look forward to, uh, what are the key fixtures uh, in there. Uh, and just a little recap before we go into it. Remember the Nations League, it was right after this long season where we had four match days crammed in together in June. I actually, uh, you may remember, I uh, went with my family to see Austria play France. A one vote draw and that gets us also to the point, I mean I'm wearing that Austria shirt, um, we'll, uh, that we have quite a few big nations that are relegation threatened because of that insane schedule uh, and we'll see about that as well. I would say I want to go league by league, look at the fixtures that we have coming up um, and also where things stand and then we'll see. I, uh, before we get there, I think all the other nations may have either some qualifiers for some continental tournaments uh, happening, I think it's happening in Asia, or uh, have just friendly in preparation for the World Cup. And the other really exciting thing is that we finally get to see the new World Cup jerseys, uh, some of which I think have already been released for the last international break, but not necessarily worn. But now they're all released, so we get a whole new uh, set of, of uh, new national team jerseys, which is always something exciting and in a way controversial. Uh, just saying, I think Adidas is the big winner this time around. Okay, enough preamble. Let's go into it and we'll start in League D, where we have in League D1, Latvia having already a commanding lead ahead of Moldova. They basically need to only get a win and they are through. I think even a draw, um, as we'll see in the next game, might do it for them. And then Estonia against Malta, they are, um, uh, they are level on top. However, well, Estonia have a game less. So that also has already a big meaning. So because if we look now at the next... Um, fixtures which are all here very conveniently i really don't like that league d meanwhile mean, well, it's such a small league I, I really like it in the first installment when the league d was kind of you know four groups of four that i think was perfect but we already have latvia against moldova uh if latvia gets a win they are already through even a draw is probably uh enough a draw is enough for them uh to see through so um that's relatively easy and same thing goes for estonia against malta if that game ends in a draw, then, uh, then Malta need to hope that uh, San Marino will beat Estonia the next time around. Um, if Estonia win, they are through already. And if Malta win, then Estonia can still beat them on goal difference uh, in San Marino. So it is, although I think head-to-head, head-to-head is the first one. And I don't know now how the head-to-head -head there, there is going. But uh, you see, it's already a very much skewed towards um, Estonia. Estonia definitely has won the first uh, fixture there. Um, in League C, it's also, it's pretty much pre-decided everything there. You see in every group there is a big favorite. We have Turkey uh, with um, five points ahead of Luxembourg, seemingly through. We have Greece having a commanding six uh, point lead over Kosovo. Uh, probably even holding already the um, hole, holding a tiebreaker there, but uh, we have to see the fixtures. I don't know this now by heart, but uh, basically, even if not, a point is enough for Greece to go up in League B, where frankly they belong. Kazakhstan has also a four point lead over Slovakia, looking very good, and uh, Georgia with Kvaradonda now, have a three-point lead over North Macedonia. And that's probably the one group where it's a little bit more uh, open. However, the schedule doesn't work in uh, North Macedonia's favor, as we will see. 
because on the next match they we actually have or, or already i mean turkey against Lux luxembourg we see that uh turkey is more or less through point is enough for for them they are through we have georgia against north macedonia away from home yes there was something north macedonia won there to qualify for the euros so you know there has been but if georgia gets just a point they are more or less through there so uh that will also be of big help for them uh and then greece will probably get the point in cyprus as well uh so you know it can already all be done come and kazakhstan uh play against belarus where they also should get uh the necessary points to already qualify and be in league b next time around uh the final match day if there's still something to play we have azerbaijan against kazakhstan um you know Kazakhstan have really a soft schedule. Turkey will or, already be through in North Macedonia. Even if they get the win, Georgia needs to lose points at Gibraltar, which is unlikely. So uh, you see the position of North Macedonia is not a very comf comfy one. And uh, Greece, yes, will play against Northern Ireland. Um, Greece is through. I say it like that. Going to League B, we see already in B1, Ukraine, Scotland with a game less uh, half the ad. You mind those are the two that are vying for the top spot there with Ukraine holding the advantage. Uh, then we have a group where the Russia got the disqualified. So uh, believe it or not, Israel, Iceland or Albania, one of those will be in League A next time around. It's a little bit odd with Israel holding all the cards. Then we have B3, Bosnia, Herzegovina and Montenegro. Those two, uh, Finland only with outside chances. And then I think the nominal biggest one is uh, before where uh, Norway is, sits three points ahead of Serbia and actually has a commanding lead there. So let's look at the fixture. We have Scotland, Ukraine. Yeah, there was something as well. Yeah, this was World Cup qualifier and I still don't understand why we couldn't make this one game. Why we can't make an exception that this counts double as a World Cup qualifier and as a Nations League fixture. It would have been so easy and would have saved everyone one uh, additional game I know I guess right blah 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 but I think if for uh, humanity's sake probably a little bit too high one could have made this into a single game again they play they start uh, Wednesday evening so on the day that this uh, posts is that game and then uh, in the upcoming we have a few interim we have Bosnia against Montenegro this is already the big one for Bosnia if they win they are through uh, we have Serbia against Sweden and Slovenia against Norway. I mean, uh, Serbia definitely needs to win. If they lose points, they have no chance of catching Norway. I would expect Norway to actually win at Slovenia. And we have Israel against Albania. A win for Israel sees Israel through. So, just saying. Uh, and then on the final match, day, we have again Ukraine against Scotland. Uh, probably played in Poland. So if there's still something to play between those two, that will be the decider with Norway against Serbia, which might also be a decider. Also, there's some history because remember the Euro playoffs, Serbia went there away from home and beat them uh, and were eliminated. And then they were beaten at home uh, on penalties against Scotland. So uh, that might also be an interesting one there. And, you know, uh, everyone wants to talk uh, Erling Haaland, of course. Which leaves us with League A and I actually want to start uh, with who is the favorite to win at the moment because we all have probably forgotten about it with all the madness going on. At the moment it's the Netherlands. The Netherlands ahead of Denmark, Spain and Germany with, Ger with Germany having definitely the worst record there but uh, probably having the best, a good chance of winning their group. So those four will probably make it into the final four um, with Netherlands and Denmark sitting particularly pretty uh, there. If we look at the standings, you see Denmark two points ahead of Croatia. France being in a relegation threat, although I think they will win against Austria and then Austria will go down. <laughs> but okay, uh, as long as they just use this as a warm-up for World Cup qualifiers, and this is what the Nations League at the moment should be seen as. It's also tied between Spain and Portugal, uh, a group that is much tighter because Spain uh, have two draws meanwhile against Portugal and the Czech Republic. Uh, Switzerland has a little bit in there, then the craziest group is A3. England is relegation threat, but it's wide open. And Hungary leads this group. Hungary leads this group. The team that everyone thought will go down. Uh, it's just that the season was so long that these teams were just not uh, up for snuff in any way. And you know, if you have them, the big games playing, 
rather interesting and then Netherlands three points ahead of Belgium so also a win and then uh, you know four points we'll see if you can see them also through so let's see who they will be playing next we have um, Belgium Wales Belgium definitely needs to win this, uh, this one only a point there probably means already nothing if Denmark win in Croatia they are in the final four France Desperately need to win against Austria to avoid relegation. The Netherlands against Poland is a good one. Hungary beating Germany away from home would be enough to see them in the final four. But I guess Germany will take the lead in that group. And then we have a classic between Italy and England, uh, where it is absolutely a crapshoot who will win. They actually would favor England in this one. And then Czech Republic, Portugal, Spain, Switzerland, kind of setting it up a little bit for a final match day. We already have Portugal against Spain. I think this will be a decisive match. Who will go into the top, top four? Uh, I honestly think Austria, Croatia and Denmark, France will not have much to say anymore. Uh, except maybe for relegation uh, in terms of Austria, the Netherlands, Bel Belgium. I think at this point it will be such that the, a draw for the Dutch will, will be enough. And maybe Germany can clinch it in England in their probably new away jerseys to go uh, to the final four and if England does some, something Hungary could do something against Italy but you know it's all about Portugal Spain on that one but this will be then the last one on 27th of uh, September to round out this set of fixtures so yeah I think there are a few exciting games in there I probably will watch definitely all Austria games and I have my eye on the other good ones uh, because at the moment I'm excited about Austria because Ralf Rangnick is our coach and they have been playing well and I'd like to see this development uh, I would them though uh, I, I would not expect them to get more at most a win in these two fixtures so that's my personal uh, perspective but you know it is exciting in, in a way if you have a world-class coach and a decent squad and I'm excited for Euro qualifying and probably then a potential World Cup qualifying thereafter watch out for Austria I'm I'm optimistic. So yeah, that was it for me. Which fixtures are you looking forward to? Uh, I, I would be in, in, interested to see. Uh, are you excited about the uh, Nations League and so on? As far as I know, Argentina and Brazil is not going to happen. Uh, so that's a little bit of a bummer. But in any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking on the bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.